This next topic admittedly is one that is hard to talk about. One in seven kids experience sexual abuse, and a majority of the time the abuser is someone the child knows, even someone they trust. Emily Bell McCormick is with The Policy Project, a nonprofit organization that advocates for equitable policies for children, families, and community. And Em says there is a bright side to this very dark problem. And you believe that starts with prevention, sister. Welcome. Oh, thank you so it's much for having me. So good to see you. And it's anytime so good you to speak, see you. we listen. Emily's a longtime <laughs> friend of our show. And you're doing great work. So at The Policy Project, you have put period products in schools, mm -hmm. you have advocated for teen resource centers. Why this topic right now? You know, it's so interesting. I was actually having a conversation with a friend and she brought this up. And I was immediately like, oh, child sexual abuse, I can't, I, I, I like can't even go there. That is too much for me. Yeah. It's hard to think about. I don't even, I don't want to talk about it. And then I think because I reacted in such a strong way, I just noticed that myself and realized like, how could we not start having this conversation? And I was reminded of this um, time with, with, in with doing periods and I'm so into prevention we want to prevent things we don't want problems and at the time we were visiting schools and there were a couple schools in the state that had stacks of black sweatpants mm -hmm. at their schools for girls who didn't have period products and needed to change their pants. Oh, and I thought, you know, at that time, I was like, this is the exact problem. Yeah, we don't need a stack of black sweatpants. Right. We need to prevent this from happening in the first place. Right. And so with child sexual abuse, I think what we realized is for so long we've said there's no way to prevent this. People kind of think you can't, but the reality is we've identified a couple of things, a bill with the legislature, getting communities together to talk about family safety plans, and really just saying the word child sexual abuse to work on the shame and stigma that can actually have an impact on preventing this in the long term. Let's start with point one. Tell us about the bill. Yeah, the bill is a big deal. So um, there is a history for this bill in the state of Utah. There We have um, schools, about 11% of schools have curriculum already that talks about child sexual abuse. It's very cool. It is a lot like maturation. So it's just once, you know, for 30, 60 minutes a year. It's pretty short and extremely age appropriate. So we're just saying, hey, instead of 11% of kids receiving this, let's give 100% of kids the opportunity to receive this curriculum. So let me ask you this. I mean, there is sometimes a stigma and even a shame associated with this topic. Beyond that, you may have a parent who says, I don't want the public schools teaching this For sure. topic. What would you say to that parent? Yeah, it's a very, very valid point, And it's something that we, even in, in our own group, we try to watch like, what should schools be doing? Well, when 50% of child sexual abuse, it, the perpetrator is a child, is another child. And so if this education is there and 90% of the time like you said they know the perpetrator right and the family trusts the perpetrator and so I think when we have this in schools it creates actually a system for families to talk about it so we invite them in almost like a maturation mm -hmm. where parents are invited to come in it gives parents the language to talk to their kids mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. it helps them kind of understand the bigger part of the issue and you go home with your child and know how to talk about it now parents who don't feel comfortable for whatever reason yeah. there are a lot of reasons right you can always say this just is an opt for my out kid. Yeah. so is the bill then to allow it to happen or to offer funding for it to happen it is it is for both so oh. it, well well actually it is actually allowed under state law right now okay. so it can happen in schools this is to really get funding so the school schools want to do this and can really address this because as we know when kids are kind of stressed out about something like this they don't have the words they don't have the vocabulary to yeah. talk about it yeah. but this helps them identify like five trusted adults that they can tell mm -hmm. and then one of those adults will hopefully help them through this issue and 30 seconds left tell me about this family safety plan that's an action parents can take yeah. toward this greater good yeah absolutely one of our community partners Sapria has this great thing where it helps you identify risky situations for your kids like what are times that my kids could be vulnerable to yes, this yes. and then really go through and identify how to do that if you're interested in it sapria.org has information but we also have um, a bunch of community events coming up where we help people develop this family safety plan information on your website yes thepolicyproject.org i admire how you're using your voice to better families and to better our community so thank you for telling about it us about it keep it keep us posted thank you brett